Uh, welcome to, to the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health. Uh, we are very happy to be hosting this event where we are actually combining three different aspects. We, we have been discussing, discussing the, the Beijing uh, plus 20 process within the Finnish context and, and preparing our, our CSW delegation for, for the United Nations uh, status of, of women's uh, uh, meeting that starts on the 9th of March. And now we are looking, looking forward to uh, having a discussion on, on the post-2015 uh, agenda and, and the goals for that. And I'm very happy that we have, we have a cooperation here between the civil society, society and, and, and the government. Uh, and I would like to give the floor now to, to Heli Pekkonen, who is the UN70 campaign coordinator at the Finnish UN Association. And, and the UN Association will take on the rest of the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Should I? Uh, can you hear me if I speak to the mic like this? So, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have an honor to open the second session of today's seminar, titled "From Vision to Transformation: Discussion on New Post 2015 Agenda." Uh, as I was introduced, I'm the campaign coordinator for the UN70 this year in Finland. And year 2015 is an important year both for UN and for Finland. UN will celebrate its uh, 17th anniversary in October, but one month before that, in September, the world leaders will set new universal targets for development for coming 15 years. Finland also became a member of UN in 1955, so this year, in December, Finland will also celebrate its 16th UN membership anniversary. Um, uh, I'm the campaign coordinator uh, for UN70 from fin uh, UN Association of Finland's part, but there's also four other UN organizations in the campaign that are UN Women Finland, UNICEF Finland, Finnish Refugee Council and the Family Federation of Finland. Those of you who, you, uh, who haven't yet seen our uh, big timeline wall, <laughs> when, you, when you go out it's in the lobby. So we are inviting everybody to write and tell world's best news. A campaign that we borrowed from Denmark to be our 17th year anniversary campaign and the idea of the campaign is to tell people that the world is actually quite much better place than everybody might th think. So there's positive development uh, going on all the time. Uh, we also invite everybody to build future for the 70 years. So you are all welcome to write your own best future news to the world's best news timeline. And you can also participate uh, in, uh, in Facebook. I, uh, it's called facebook.com Maailman parhaat uutiset. And then I would probably say this in Finnish uh, www.yk.fi kautta yk uh, we, Our webpage will open in a couple of weeks. Uh, now I have the honor of inviting this to the stage the Minister of Development uh, uh, of Finland, Sirpa Patera who deals with the Ministry's Development Cooperation Affairs at the government and the government's ownership steering, which is a unique and interesting combination which helps linking the development issues to the corporate social responsibility <coughs> issues. So, she's also actively involved in several NGOs working especially to support children and youth activities, both nationally and internationally. So, welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure and honor to be here and see so many participants in this seminar. May I start the ex by expressing the, my appreciation to organizers for this opportunity to discuss these very topical issues today. In 2015, ambitious decision 
on sustainable development and poverty eradication will be taken three high level meetings that will influence the direction of global develop development for the years come how many years we can expect that the third international conference of on financing on development in July and the UN summit for adoption of the post 2015 agenda in September provide the platform to agree a new sustainable development agenda the year will end with the negotiation on the climate change agreement in Paris success this negotiation is pivotal in showing what kind of the world we want to live and build for the new future generations in what follows i will present some points that my view require social special attention we consider it very important that the new sustainable development agenda will combine the goals the means for the implementation and a global monitoring in the one single agenda this is an important but also challenging task that requires transformation for established thinking approaches and structures from all the partners i'm happy to note that the UN development system has already started to reflect on its role in relation to the new agenda with the serious discussion under the heading fit on purpose you may be know that the sustainable development agenda will be comprehensive in scope it aims to end poverty and achieve sustainable development in these three dimensions economic social and environmental integrated approaches are needed and synergies will need to be shown actions and improvements in one domain should be supportive of actions in their domains therefore policy coherence is more important than ever before one of the most important changes is that the new agenda is universal it has implications on all countries and peoples it's very important that the new agenda includes human rights and in equalities so that no one is left behind gender equality and empowerment for women and girls are also vital for sustainable development and the issue that finland sees as a priority on the other hand achieving sustainable development requires that we take account different country situation national ownership leadership and political will need be shown by all global goals will be achieved when they resonate with the national plans and targets progress will depend on all actors working in part, part, partnership and upholding their commit, commitments responsibility at the national level is primary but governments cannot achieve the sdgs by themselves partnerships beyond traditional channels of cooperation and the changes in the way stakeholders collaborate are required enabling policy environment is one of the core elements of the global partnership that is the key for the new agenda will be successful the ambitious agenda also needs strong means 
of implementation. It's widely recognized that the financing will need to be mobilized from very varieties of sources. All domestic and international, private and public means should be hardnessed to contribute to find the necessary means to finance the agenda. True transformation can be achieved only by bringing together resources, talent and commitment of all actors. For us, it's necessary to emphasize the domestic resources as the basis for the national sustainable development. Tax reforms, wider tax based, stopping elect uh, financial follows, and work against corruption, start at home, but need to be supported by international efforts. Strong commitment and responsible ac actions by private sector to sustainable development is one of the important and necessary contribution by implementation. ODA, as you know, will continue to play a central role of financing, especially for the poorest and fragile states. I would like to stress that the options but forward in the report by the Committee on Sustainable Development Financing co chair by Ambassador Mayanen, many of you know, know him, serves as an excellent reference as regard means of implementation. The means of implementation also cover a wide range of non-financial means, which are equally important. The new agenda will stress exchange of knowledge on how to use technology and innovation, trade, science, knowledge and expertise sharing capacity building and other similar approaches to advance the new agenda. Monitoring, reviewing and accountability must take place at national, regional and global levels. Such mechanisms must be, be based on transparency and participation even though developing in the required framework to monitor progress through an inclusive process will take them. In this process, the idea of the mutual learning and sharing good ex experience between all countries is what we are looking for. Monitoring and re reviewing is also a great way to direct action and, and resources where they are needed. Finland is committed to playing our full part in all aspects of the agenda, including means of implementation. And we encourage our other partners, like the emerging economies, to contribute their, their fair share. As regards na national implementation, Finland is a good position. We have structures and clear visions on how to promote sustainable development nationally. Our strongly participatory uh, national social commitment to sustainable development called the Finland we want by 2050. Aims at prosperous Finland within the limits, the carrying capacity of the nature. In the coming months, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Minister of Environment will together promote this globally unique model in various international fora as example of the new concept to engage all actors of the society in advancing sustainable development. Let us all remember that the many 
of the Millennium De Development Goals have been achieved. The great deal more than can be done in the following 15 years if we put our minds and actions together. We have also learned a lot of the past and ongoing negotiation provide an opportunity to build on that. Our ambition must match with the task ahead. I hope you all get some inspiration from today's discussions. The world faces big challenges with the post-2015 agenda, but at the same time, we are at a very interesting turning point that enables us to make a better future for the generations to come. Thank you for the attention. Uh, thank you, Minister Patera. Uh, now it's time to invite, uh, invite our keynote speaker, Mr. Magdi Martinez Soliman, to the uh, from UNDP to the stage. Um, I think we could, after your speech, we could take some questions from the audience if there is any, and then you are free to go if you need to go. Uh, but I can introduce you <laughs> before. So. Uh, Mr. Uh, Martinez Soliman has been working for the UN for 15 years, focusing on institutional development of legislatures, the judiciary, always difficult word, electoral legislation, anti corruption, corruption strategies, accountability in the public f financial management, and democratic transi <laughs> transitions and national dialogue. He was posted in Burundi, Togo, Bangladesh, and Senegal. He was UNDP's senior government advisor for 18 West African countries from 2000 to 2003, and until 2006, he was the practice manager of UNDP's democratic governance team. team. That year, he was appointed for, by uh, the UN Secretary General as the first executive director of the UN Democracy Fund. <laughs> okay, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. I understand that I am not free to go before I take the questions. <laughs> very clear. Um, I would like to thank the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, of Finland and in particular Minister uh, Sirpa Patero for uh, her hospitality, the Finnish UN Association for organizing this important seminar. Helena, thank you very much. And for hosting us today, I would also like to thank the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health, the Coalition of Finnish Women's Associations and the National Council of Women of Finland who allow us to be here today. I would also like to thank you for the courtesy you bestow on us to uh, hold this meeting in English language. It is uh, uh, very uh, kind of you to allow us to use a language that is not yours. Ladies and gentlemen, um, 2015, the minister just mentioned it, is a year of critical importance. We stand on the cusp of a new era of sustainable development. Uh, we are the first generation with the ability to uh, eradicate poverty for good. And we are also the last generation who can rein in climate change before it is too late. The responsibility is ours. It is time to act now. In year 2000, when the leaders agreed on the Millennium Declaration, few could have imagined what would follow. For the first time in human history, countries came together at the United Nations and turned noble principles, which had been enshrined in Beijing, in Rio, in other cities that uh, uh, ushered international conferences into a set of time-bound common goals and targets for development. And over the last 14 years, the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals, have generated tremendous progress. Many countries have conquered access to education for their children, access to water for their villages, reduced disease and poverty for their poor, and move towards gender equality for women, but also for men. Eradicating poverty from being considered an impossible dream 
has become the same moral obligation today as eradicating slavery was two centuries ago. Globally, extreme poverty has been cut by half, as has the proportion of people without sustainable access to improved sources of drinking water. Nine out of 10 children now go to school and fewer children are dying from easily preventable illnesses. The world continues to fight killer diseases such as malaria, tuberculosis and AIDS, but we fight hard and we fight better. The MDGs have invigorated multilateral institutions like UNDP and the United Nations at large. It has forged partnerships. The weight of citizens' voices and that of civil society has grown ever stronger. And around the world, the goals have guided budget decisions and lawmaking processes in the North as much as in the South. This year's nomination of the MDGs for a Nobel Peace Prize is a phenomenal sign of appreciation. These goals have contributed to unprecedented efforts to meet the needs of the world's poorest and contributed to the quest for a more peaceful society. In September, governments are due to agree on a successor framework of the MDGs, of the Millennium Development Goals. We need to build on our MDG experience. The new framework has large shoes to fill, but it will also be different in many ways. It will require an integrated approach to sustainable development and collective action to address the challenges of our time. It needs to have more ambition in terms of gender equality, sustainability of the economy, of our consumption and production patterns, human rights, democratic governance and peace building. Our goal is to put people at the center and protect our one and only planet. Our duty is to end poverty leave no one behind, and build lives of dignity for all. The post-2015 framework has been developed as a political compromise between the member states of the United Nations. It is a carefully balanced proposition of universal reach between the priorities of very different nations, from the most developed, like yours, to the poorest of the world, from the climate vulnerable to the most resilient. The Secretary General of the United Nations was asked by the General Assembly to produce a synthesis report to regroup the decisions made to date by the Member States. He defined the six essential elements that allow to explain the much more complex 169 targets and 17 goals. The first element is the unfinished business of the MDGs the eradication of hunger and poverty in our lifetime. This is the agenda for dignity. The second element is the employment, the social protection, health and education, the more classic social development goals which conform the agenda for the people. For states to afford the social agenda, they need to experience economic growth, develop the infrastructures we all need, the trade, the energy, the construction, of middle-income nations and middle-class societies. This is the agenda for prosperity. But growth cannot come at all costs. We need growth that is not disastrous. We need it to be inclusive and the economy to grow alongside sustainable pathways. This is the agenda for the planet. We cannot build such an agenda alone. This is why we're here today with civil society. We need the participation of the people of the citizens, of their organizations. We need the input of science and academia and knowledge and the dynamism of the private sector. Post-2015 is also an agenda for partnerships. And finally, for the first time explicitly, the development agenda commits to democratic values and declares that development needs human rights and peaceful and inclusive societies, which it has summarized as the agenda for justice. So people, planet, prosperity and partnerships, dignity and justice are the six essential elements of an agenda for sustainable human development that allows us to grow, protect and develop with respect to the boundaries and the beauty of our planet. As UN member states launch their deliberation this year, they are firmly guided by the proposal of the Open Working Group that sets out 17 specific sustainable development goals. The proposal has the potential to be truly transformative 
it embodies a view of sustainability at large. Next month in Sendai, the Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction will encourage us to think hard about what progress means and how it can be sustained over time, about how not to lose development gains that have been hardly fought for and hardly won. The focus will not only be narrowly on disasters, but also on consequences of economic shocks and the effect of insecurity on health, events that have dragged countries back by decades, events that have stolen the life prospects of whole generations. Preemption is key. Many tragedies that are unfolding today could have taken a different course. For instance, we had the know-how and the technology to combat Ebola before its current outbreak. We are now faced with a much more radical effort and immense human suffering. Beyond the needless deaths, the tragedy is multiplied. Children missing schools, lost harvests, markets destroyed, and wealth wiped from national budgets. Implementing post-2015 agenda will require significant investments. The minister mentioned the third international conference for financing for development in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, which will take place in July. It will be critical. A good result in Addis will bode well for reaching agreements on the sustainable development goals in September in the United Nations General Assembly back in New York and for achieving them. More than the MDGs, this new agenda is about hard political choices but the availability of financial support will still be important for many nations, especially the least developed countries, and is an important trust-building signal. Implementation goes beyond financing. Developing countries need to do their part. They need to tax their wealthy citizens, they need to collect revenue, they need to fight corruption and illicit financial flows, they need to give priority to productive social spending. Mutual accountability is at stake. Governance and aid can provide the framework where trade and private investments skyrocket development. And this is why the future framework that is being proposed is to be universal in nature. We understand that universality is all rights for all people in all countries. While the benefits of concerted action might be more easily discerned for developing countries, those who receive the support, what might the new agenda mean for countries like yours, for countries like Finland? The Secretary General's report states that universality implies, and I quote, that all countries will need to change, each with its own approach, but each with a sense of the global common good. The post-2015 agenda presents Finland with an opportunity to take a candid look at itself and to compare its social and environmental policies, its quest for sustainability, with those of your neighbours in Scandinavia, in Europe and beyond. It allows to compare this year with last year and last year with next year. It should allow different constituencies, government, parliament, civil society, media, to analyze the data, to compare progress against a demanding framework of objectives. It should help you to check if you are indeed making progress on reducing inequality, enhancing the quality of education, greening the energy mix, improving water management, so that people also here in Finland can enjoy even further rising prosperity, sustained well-being and a natural environment that is safeguarded for future generations. But above all, it means that Finland's impact on the rest of the world needs to be carefully explained and universally respected, especially its role as a generous development actor. This is also about aid, but it is not only about aid. It is about the way in which Finland and Finnish people and Finnish businesses relate to others. It is about being a good glo global corporate trader and partner. When we convened the private sector to discuss the SDGs, in Denmark, the pharma business leaders, the hospital suppliers, explained to us how important the MDGs had been for their bottom line in Asia, for the production that they do, for the exports that they do. 
development is not an old-fashioned statist budgetary burden, but a public-private partnership where stimulus and coverage of ODA, of the official development assistance, opens avenue to the dynamism and revenues of foreign direct investment. In other words, development abroad is also about our jobs at home. It is a global voice for a better international order. This is why the United Nations has taken the conversation on the post-2015 agenda to the world. Millions of people from all walks of life have expressed their aspirations and needs in national consultations, thematic me meetings, online spaces and offline spaces, so that not only those who have access to internet can vote and give their opinions, and the global My World survey. Over seven million people have expressed their priorities for the world they want. I would like to finally thank Finland for having supported this process. At the UN and in the development system of the United Nations, we look forward with excitement to the years ahead to build, in part, thanks to the Finnish commitment and entrepreneurship, a life of dignity for all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Martinez Soliman. Uh, is there any questions for either for Minister Patero or then Mr. Mr. Martinez Soliman before we continue to the to our panelists? Well, if not, then I'm going to invite uh, our uh, panelists and our um, advocacy coordinator Jenny Kauppila who will moderate the discussions to the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Helim. Welcome also from my side. I'm Jenny Kauppila, and I'm happy to host the panel discussion. So please, the panelists, um, join here in the front. And um, we have a very distinguished and uh, knowledgeable panel today, uh, representing various fields. We have um, Ambassador uh, Co Coordinator for Post-2015 from the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, Rita Resch. She has also worked um, uh, with the Arms Trade Treaty, uh, has been a key actor in that process. She's been um, Ambassador in Manila, and also she's um, a long-term um, key actor within the UN Affairs. So then we have um, the Tanzanian chairperson of UN Association of uh, Tanzania, Malisi Lesi. She's a lawyer. She's a founder of an uh, NGO called Good Hope Center that works with women's and children's rights. And she's also the co-author of the uh, Sido Shadow Report of Tanzania. And then we have Jouni Nissinen, who works now for NGO platform uh, GEPAM, and uh, he's a former uh, <laughs> coordin uh, coordinator of, um, not coordinator, policy, um, environmental policy officer from the Finnish Nature League. So he has got expertise from the environmental side as well as from the development side. He has been following closely the um, post-2015, and he was also in the delegation in, in Rio Plus 20. So, um, without uh, longer introductions, I allow the panelists to take the floor and uh, give their comments and, um, and uh, opinions. So, please, let's start the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I don't have to introduce myself anymore. Um, and, and now that the, um, the minister and, and Mr. Martinez Soliman have put us in the big picture, I can take the juicy parts and, and uh, go right into the negotiations and, and give you some, some ideas where we are going with the, with the negotiations. <coughs> Now the in invitation says that the, we adopt the, the uh, new global goals. I hope that we talk about the whole agenda. The agenda is about the, the um, uh, political declaration, it's about the goals and targets, it's about the means of implementation and it's about 
the follow-up uh, and accountability. And this is the whole agenda. And it, it, it's, it's not only, I don't, I'm not criticizing the organizers, but very often people talk only about the goals. They are very important part of the agenda, but it's, it's, they are an integral part of the agenda, but so are the other three, which are as important, because without the follow-up and, and monitoring accountability, there is practically nothing. So, and, and also without the implementation, means of implementation, we can't fulfill those ambitious goals and targets that, that we have. And the political declaration, probably the heads of state and government, and don't tell them, probably that's the only piece of, uh, of the agenda that they will read. So that is why it has to be very short, concise, and, and uh, uh, inspirational. So anyway, we have started the negotiations on this big picture and the big agenda in, in January, and when we had a stock taking, when we went through all these four pieces. And I have to say that the, the atmosphere was quite good, uh, which is a good sign always. We don't only have this, this uh, as, as previous speakers have said, we don't only have this uh, summit in September. We have the, I would say, more important meeting in July uh, on the means of implementation and financing for development because it sets the tone for the whole year. And of course, the Sendai conference also, which is already next month. And, and then we have, at the end of the year, we have the Paris um, uh, negotiations on climate change. And they all set, all these four conferences this year only, set the tone for the next 15 years. Um, so since, since you, you have already heard, heard how transformational this, this, uh, this year is and about the universality, universality of our agenda, about the paradigm shift that we all have to have in, in all the stakeholders in, in our, in our um, thinking, uh, I, I could say something about the contents of, the, of these negotiations. Um, we hope that the means of implementation will be discussed and negotiated in the financing for development track. Uh, which, unfortunately, so far, the discussions have been very much on the official development assistance. And with the minister's presence, I'm very reluctant to say anything. But in my personal capacity, I could say that, that hopefully these discussions, uh, and the undersecretary, <laughs> these discussions will be solved very quickly so that we could sort of talk about something else also. Because I think that um, Ambassador Mayanen, who is also here, could say that the, the results of an ODA, it's an insufficient means of financing the ambitious goals that we have. So we could go to other means of implementation also. We have already discussed uh, 17 goals, which are very ambitious, 169 targets. Um, next month, uh, we know whether these would hold or not. Uh, and, and there is a large um, group of member states who said that do not touch them. And the danger is, and the risk is, that if we t touch them, the, it, they will all be open. And uh, my personal opinion is that if we touch them, we lose something very important. They are a compromise. They are not the best possible. We didn't get everything that we wanted uh, uh, in, in the goals and targets, but then nobody did. But we have to have a, a very high ambition level in order to, to change this world in the next 15 years. And I think that the universality is, is a big part of it, because we all have to be part of, parts of this. It's not north-south, it's not south-south, uh, it's not even triangular, it's, it's everything. It's public and private uh, to a large extent. Um, and uh, new way of thinking and new way of, of action. And. Uh, uh, there are contentious points. Um, the, Mr. Soliman Martinez was talking about responsibility, shared responsibility, mutual responsibility. I think that getting those words into this agenda is a huge victory. We are still debating and fighting what do we mean and how do we apply the uh, CD, CBDR, which is the Common but Differentiated Responsibility. And there are a lot of countries who say that this has to be applied to the whole agenda, not to climate change, not to environmental issues, but the whole agenda. And I think that we had a very interesting exchange of, of views at the, at the lunch just a minute ago, who's responsible to whom and how we can, how we can do this. Um, uh, it's there. We just have to deal with it somehow. It doesn't go away anymore. And this is what the developing countries uh, are wanting and, and want very, very vigorously and, and want it to be covering the whole agenda. 
some of the, the important parts uh, for the agenda is, is peace and security. We have Goal 16, which talks about peaceful and inclusive societies and, and access to justice. Uh, we wanted more. We didn't get it. But we, want, what, we should be happy with what we have now, because it's a victory already that it's there. Now we have another chance to put more on peace and security in, in the declaration. And we were happy to note that the African countries uh, mentioned it very much according to their own common position. And we have allies there because we wanted it too. My statement was almost all about peace and security. Of course, I had to put something else in it too so that I didn't just attack it and say that we want peace and security in there. Not, not only because the sake of peace and security, but how it affects human rights and how it, how it affects uh, development. And I was already th there in 2000 when we negotiated or before the 2000 Millennium Declaration was, was um, negotiated. And somehow we managed to put those three issues in the same declaration. It was very forceful declaration. Unfortunately, the follow up has not been that forceful. I'm not criticizing the Millennium Development Goals. They have been very good. They have provided a result. But then we have to move forward. We have a future uh, future of 15 years might not be that long, but in some people's lives, they are long. The, the children of this uh, the day of today are going to be adults uh, in, in 15 years, or at least young, young adults, and we have to think of them and the future generations, although some people also remind us that we build this also for us ourselves, our generation. It's not only the future generation. Uh, I'm not going to be continuing very, very long, but since uh, Mr. Soliva Martinez mentioned the, the Secretary General's report, Report. Uh, and we think that it's a good report, but again, as we, some people focus on the goals only, some people in the Secretary General's report only focus on the six elements. They have become larger than life. And many people, uh, many countries support them, at least as a means of communicating this very complicated and very large agenda, agenda, not only to the people at large, but to some governments also, because for whom it's difficult to understand what we are talking about. And we try to put something in the, in the, in the, in the declaration about these six elements, uh, which need to be a little bit further developed in order to have that punchline like the MDGs had, it was very understandable. You had the words and you had the picture. We now have also 17 pictures. They are not as good as the MDG pictures. But we have a problem with the six elements. Many of us support the six elements. Some of us support four elements. And they are the four Ps. And they are people, prosperity, planet, and partnership. To my great surprise, they want to drop dignity and I don't know why, because it includes uh, the prosperity, which is the eradication of poverty also. And that is the other side of the coin in our, in our uh, large agenda. I, don't, I understand that poor people have their dignity. And I do understand that there is that 1% who has so much wealth that they could take care of the whole world about three times over. But this is um, anyway what they want to drop. And the other, one I under the other one they want to drop is justice. And that I understand a little bit better because it includes the peace and security part of the, of the agenda. And there is still this little hope in some ma people's minds that Goal 16 somehow could vanish <laughs> from the face of the earth, at least from the goals but then they want to keep the rest of the goals. And it, 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 that's a good example of how you could define have the cake and eat it too, because you, can, you can't just drop one, one goal and have, have the rest of it. But I could stop here and pass on the microphone to some, some others, but these are some snippets that I wanted to bring to your attention about the negotiations. And we will continue in, in, in March. Then we have um, the, the goals and, and, and the targets under discussion and also the indicators, which is a, a fascinating world of its own. And I do have to admit, and I have said it out loud in New York, that my intellectual capacity, I don't have enough intellectual capacity to talk about indicators in detail. So I hope that the indicators will be kept out of political discussions and kept to experts. Thank you very much. Very Hanady, can you hear? I'm very Hanady to be here and to be given this opportunity. I will talk of the negotiations, but localization according to my country, 
because we have not gone at the global level, but we have started at least at the national level to put the inputs which at the end of the day will come up. At the national level, we have said, let the elements remain the same, but we have to stress five issues, which have been taken by MDGs. Now we go to SDGs, but these have not been given enough efforts, or almost nothing have been done. One, mainstreaming gender into all aspects of life. In my country, these have not been seen to be done. <coughs> Most violations are there, being violent, being harassment, are still there. So we want to see this must be tackled in this new set of development goals. Second, government extensive effort in improving working economic status and the independence of women. Women are still depending on men. And if you are depending on men, you can't say no to what he's want to do. So the government must make sure that the economic status of women is improved for them to have a voice to say no to violence. Third, equal chances for women and men in decision making process and organs. During MDGs in my country, we said we want to have 50-50. 50 men, 50 women in decision-making bodies. But up to now, we have only 30%. Now we want to realize the 50-50 in the decision-making bodies. The last one is cooperation. We can't work alone. We want cooperation between the South and the North to realize these goals. Because we depend on each other and we learn from each other. So through cooperation, we can realize this set of goals. But above all, we can say so. But he, if there is no monitoring, we can't know to what extent we have achieved what we have set. In order to identify gaps and set new strategies for future plans. At our national level, we think this if will be included and seen to be done. We, we, we expect the situation will change and the realization of the goals will be fairly by many of our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also on my, my, my behalf for, for nice speeches so far. Um, as Yeni already told, I used to work for the Finnish Association for Nature Conservation and now I have moved to to Kepa, which is the NGO, Finnish NGO platform with over, over 300 member organizations that has actually been coordinating the participation of the Finnish NGOs to the post-2015 process since, more or less, since Rio. And actually, currently, the Finnish NGOs are just about to, to publish a, a really long commentary paper on, on, on the uh, post-2015 process, including also some suggestions for, for additional um, targets and indicators, but, but unfortunately I cannot give it to you yet, quite yet, because it's still under review. Yeah, you will get it before you, you go <laughs> from the office, I, I guarantee you that. Um, but anyway, so the Finnish civil society organizations, generally speaking, we see that the overarching principles, the most important principles in this process are universality, 
sustainability and respecting planetary boundaries and human rights. Universality is, is a new uh, issue com uh, compared to, to the Millennium Development Goals and, and, and we think that universal commitments for all countries with national differentiation according to different contexts, needs, responsibilities and capabilities. In the other words, recognition of the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities is, is quite essential in the process. Secondly, Sustainability is, is uh, the key. We really need to learn to respect the planetary boundaries and also uh, we need to take the climate change seriously. And we have to have a... Uh, this process also, as, as on its part, needs to lead to, to a good solution in, in Paris in, in December in the climate meeting. And, of course, the third part. Needless to, to say that the the whole post-2015 agenda must be anchored and built on to already existing human rights legal norms, standards and commitments, and the framework, its goals and targets must aim at respecting, protecting and fulfilling universal, indivisible and interdependent human rights, both economic, social and cultural rights, and civil and political rights. Those are the overarching principles, and, and as I said, I'm not going to the, to the details, which, which our paper will re reveal later. Um, instead, I'm going to bring, bring up some issues related to the funding as well, because we see as, as the, the, the financing for development process as an essential part of the post-2015 process. Uh, and there, of course, there are several aspects, and in particular, I would like to stress the following. Um, the mobilization of the domestic resources, that is, for instance, taxes, uh, is, is quite, quite important in the, in the new discussion about, about finances. And, and we think that the United Nations Tax Committee needs to be strengthened as part of this, uh, this work. Um, and in addition, of course, we, we aim at increased transparency in, in global financial system. Sustainable development really needs to, needs to come first. Trade is only a tool. And so even if we talk about foreign investment, the corporate accountability and responsibility is quite important and it needs to be there. We need binding rules for corporate accountability. It cannot be ju just something that the corporations do if, if they feel like that. And of course, the industrialized countries also need to to reconfirm their commitment to, to 0.7% ODA, ODA target. Uh, and in addition to that, it, we need additional climate funding, which as, as part of, the, of getting the funds together, we need new international mechanisms like such as carbon tax and aviation tax that need to be introduced as part of the, of the financial system. Lastly, I would like to stress that, that it's not only funding and financial structures that, that need to be in place for sustainable development to happen. It was actually quite interesting um, when, when Mr. Martinez Soliman was giving his speech, I was just going through the written speech at the same time and the, it struck me, maybe it was just because of, of time constraints, but, but you left the part out of your speech which specifically mentioned that data is key, uh, and and so so I would like to bring bring this up now that that in order if we really want to to make sustainable development reality, we really need data and we need follow up and evaluation, and that's something that 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 must not be forgotten at any point. Which actually brings me to to my concluding question: um, if the if the process goes at, as we as we hope it will go, and we will have. Uh, good sustainable development goals in place in uh, after the UN uh, general uh, summit in 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 September. De then, Mr. Martinez Soliman, how, how do you see how does the UN system foresee its role in the implementation and follow up of the Universal Post 2015 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals? Uh, specifically, is, is there a need to reshuffle the United Nations as an organization somehow? To, to get this done. Thank you. Thank you for the um, 
first round of comments and questions. I think I'll directly start um, giving the mic to um, Minister and uh, Martinez, uh, Mr. Martinez Solimon, both uh, to answer if there were any uh, quick comments, and then I'll get some comments from the audience. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me let me stand in front of you. Um, the the indeed uh, the the constraints of time and to to make the speech as as efficient as possible i didn't mention the issue of uh, the accountability framework the data um the uh, uh, the 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 need for a good dashboard so that we know how to measure progress and that we also know whether progress is being registered. There's another part that has to do with data and it is who is accountable to whom and who will be responsible to providing A, the information and B, uh, uh, the responsibility to report. How do you report on a framework like that? And uh, uh, the third is will all countries report? And that is a big question. Uh, uh, we tend to believe that development frameworks are for poor countries to report almost to rich countries, to those who provide development funding. And I think we are shifting this paradigm towards, a, as I said, a mutual accountability framework where we all report to all and we have a peer review of who is going where and who is improving. I think it is interesting to look at uh, the starting point uh, and the direction of travel. If we uh, ask, uh, let me take your example, madam, if we ask uh, 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 the Tanzanian society and President Kikwete to inform uh, whether progress has been attained in terms of social inclusion, or financial inclusion, or land titling, it would also be interesting to know whether uh, countries like Finland have improved in those very records. Of course, they don't start from the same point. But what amount of progress are we obtaining in each of our societies, in my own country, in Spain? Are we progressing or are we regressing? And that is interesting to know. It is important for the political leaders. I think it is important for the parliamentary leaders. It is an instrument of accountability of, of, of government. Um, on the second point of your question, sir, um, I, I do believe the UN needs reform. We were discussing that the reform of the human rights pillar was achieved at least as far as we could go a couple of years back. The reform of the peace and security pillar is the most difficult nut to crack, and we have stopped short of achieving much in that uh, record. And the uh, reform of the development system is something that we need to undertake, and probably uh, it is the next uh, uh, tall order that we have in front of us. Uh, in terms of the role of the UN in implementation, we will have a bigger role in the southern countries, in the countries where we are a development partner. My organization, UNDP, works fundamentally in the poorest countries of the world. Uh, we work with governments and civil society, with academia and other stakeholders um, to deliver implementation services, if you will, to agendas like the post-2015. Thank you. Thank you. Does the minister want to give a direct response to any of the comments? Maybe only a little bit. I agree totally that, <laughs> that we have to discuss all these together. And it's not possible to speak only about the financing or only those goals or, or only the climate questions. We have to put all those together. And it's a, it's a big, big challenge. And I'm, I'm not sure how we can manage that. Because we start about the, the financing meeting. And afterwards, because... Normally, I like to do first the targets, first the goals, and after that, how to finance them. And now we are going a little bit in a difficult way in, in my side, I think so. And the other point, maybe I a little bit continue. If I think about those goals, what we have to do here in Finland. And uh, I have two points in my mind, and I think that maybe the, the first is... Uh, we know the situation in, in the Finnish child. We have a many child who lives in quite bad condition, in, in not so welfare as, as the other part. And we have to put the more equal equality. So maybe that's the one. And of course the other one is quite obvious for us. It's the violence against the women. In, 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 the, in the families. 
and uh, it's very harmless that we have so much violence in in home in Finland and I think that those two are those very obvious goals what we have to discuss in here in Finland and look at the, our own level where the start and what will be the after 15 years. That's all. And I, unfortunately I have to go now so I can't. But maybe the, my assistant will tell me afterwards what are the last questions. Thank you very much. And um, I think we have um, until 4.15, am I correct? Or is it 4 o'clock sharp? Can somebody... 4.15, good. So we have um, about half an hour for questions from the audience and the discussion. So I would propose that I uh, get first round of questions. You can address any of the panelists. Um, and then we go for the second round after the first session. So. Uh, let's take three, four questions to start with. And please introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Elina Molden and I'm the Executive Director of the Finnish National Committee for UN Women. Thank you very much for all the very, very, very interesting presentations. Uh, very many actually thoughts and questions, but I think I'll ask only one, and that is the question that um, that issue um, that Miss Silesi raised on gender mainstreaming. Uh, I couldn't agree more, and my question is. Um, well, as we know, it's not enough to have just a standalone goal, gender standalone goal. Uh, we need that too, um, but we also need to have the gender mainstreaming through. But we also know it's not very easy thing to do and my question is how um how um how do you see that how, how is that work going to be successful what is going to be needed in their in the future upcoming work um, when deciding the actual agenda the goals and, and the targets and also very important the indicators um i'm sure there is some um, very knowledgeable good experts in, in working on these indicators, but we all know how, in, how difficult it has been to achieve the gender mainstreaming. So how can we ensure that, that we don't find ourselves after 15 years in a similar situation to that of Beijing plus 20 that, ooh, so, much, so many things that we didn't uh, quite achieve. So um, just um, would be interesting to hear your views on that. Thank you. I'm Lena Eerola, and I'm a member of uh, Female Journalist Finland. I would like to ask two questions. First, to Mr. Martin de Solman. You mentioned uh, these diseases, AIDS, and uh, um, what was the other one? <laughs> yes, you that. Yes, and uh, I thought that uh, you forgot this very big uh, thing today, uh, which is Ebola. Why didn't you mention that? Isn't it not any? Uh, isn't it not on agenda today because it is going up more and more? And the second questions to uh, to to Mrs. Mali Silesi from Tanzania. Uh, I would like to ask. Uh, uh, what are the chances for girls uh, school schooling and educating? I remember I have been there for 15 years ago, uh, building schools in the cooperation for of uh, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, the settlement movement. And I remember that there were during that time chosen thousand girls who were very good and they were supported by government and uh, in the in the schools where we were in uh, near Novorogoro there were um, equal uh, equal amount girls and boys but now now how is it the situation because you said that there should be uh, equal chances for women and and men thank you and um, one more. Yes. 
Thank you. Helen Lauko from the UN Association and I would like to first thank our excellent speakers and the panelists for putting us on the or giving us a good overview of where we stand with the post 2015 agenda. My question would be specifically on the monitoring and evaluation part. Has there been any discussion of a similar sort of way of doing it as the, on the UPR or some other actual uh, sort of mechanism on how this would be done? And then secondly, what would be the role of the civil society as a partnership in uh, following up the implementation and actually after the negotiation and the goals and the, the setup is sort of there on the spot? Because I think that should also be included in the negotiations at this stage when, when these uh, mechanisms of uh, follow-up and evaluation are discussed. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have also one request from a very interesting speaker. <laughs> we have discussed about the financing and uh, we have Perti Majanen, who is the co-chair of the financing um, committee. So he's also um, asked for, for um, a comment. So perhaps we start with his comments and then we go with the replies um, for the questions. And if we have time, then we can take one or two questions more. Thank you. Thank you, moderator, and thank you, everybody, for this opportunity. And uh, I very much wish to pay a tribute to the Finnish uh, UN Association and Helen Alko in being so skillful and talented and professional, as everybody knows they are, uh, that they have picked up a very, very important uh, topic for this discussion today, and it is implementation. In the final instance, if we think about uh, what is being produced, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals and the Post Agenda for 2015, uh, the most important thing after all is its implementation. I feel at the moment that what we already have in the, in the three reports, one by the Open Working Group, one by the committee, I've been co-chairing with a Nigerian person, Mr. Mansur Muhtar, the, the former uh, fin finance minister, and what we have in the synthesis report is already quite good and quite enough. Uh, if we implement what we have in those reports, even 50% of what we have in those reports by, by 2030, I think the world would look totally different, much better than it is today. So. Uh, I, I'm expecting, and I'm there already, that, that we start thinking about the implementation. There is uh, the only measure stick that we shall have for, for the results of this work is really the implementation. It is not so much whether there are say, 17 goals or six principles or whatsoever, but that there is a good report, there are three good reports, and, and uh, we implement them and we go ahead. And for implementation, we need uh, naturally political will. So these are, in my opinion, Helena, you are so right in convening this discussion. These are the things we must, we must be discussing uh, at the moment. Not so much anymore the details of goals and, and all these issues. They are good enough if we are able to implement them. I will, if I'm allowed to, to use a bit more time, three aspects, three issues on implementation that are very topical today and, and in the nearest future. And uh, firstly, that uh, over, well over 90% of the implementation will take place at the national level, at domestic level, and not only in developing countries as have been em has been emphasized, but universally in all countries of the world. So because so little will take place internationally, I will start with uh, international implementation. And only one issue over there. In the implementation, there has been a lot of reference for global partnership. It's here and there in all these three reports. It's been discussed, but not, nobody has really been decoding uh, uh, global partnership. What, what we are expecting, it, what it is in practice. 
how much it is the high level political forum, how much it is the United Nations General Assembly, how much it is the ECOSOC, what is the role of the Bretton Woods, what is the, uh, national, uh, the role of national entities and so forth. I think one very, very important thing to be decided now is, is uh, uh, determining the concept of global partnership. What, what it is and who is doing what and the division of labor, and the cooperation, and the synergies. I had uh, some ex expectations concerning the synthesis report, but, but it was not there. It's nowhere at the moment, and it has, be, has to be defined. Concerning the national implementation in Finland, uh, three, three issues. We have one strong good point that has already been mentioned. We are the only country in the world who have created a new kind of unique system for implementation. And it is the uh, National Society's commitment for sustainable development. It's wonderful because it is able to reach everybody. Everybody can be doing commitments, whether he's, an, she's, he's, he's she or he, but whether, whether it is an individual person or whether it's a big organization, whether it is the ministry. I, what we are doing now, by the Ministry for Foreign Affairs and, and uh, uh, Ministry of Environment together. We are advertising this model saying that it is a multi-stakeholder model, it is engaging everybody, it is giving voice to everybody. I think that uh, it cannot be, <laughs> naturally there is no model that can be implanted in some country and uh, start implementing it. But there is a lot of things to be learned of, uh, of this and I hope that we all get advertising this in Finland, advertising it abroad, and also trying to act individually concerning the uh, principles of sustainable development. Then I have the second issue concerning the domestic implementation, and it is the role of the finance ministries. The agenda is very much in the financial context. It is not only uh, maintaining the, the 0.7 uh, 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 goals. It is not only financing uh, climate uh, 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 issues. It is very much now on the, on the uh, uh, whole function of the global economic and financial system. We are suffering from frequent crises. The system is not working. The Bretton Woods are not doing what they should do. The whole system has to be reformed, and we have to go forward with this. And in Finland, our Ministry for, Foreign, uh, for <laughs> Finance must take a bigger responsibility for impl implementing these issues that are, to a very great extent, financial and economic. And the last issue is concerning also uh, the financial sources. It is the role of the private financing. What is a good thing is that we can see already that the private sector has a lot of interest for financing sustainable development goals. But I think we have to go beyond, and it is also in the, in the report of the committee. By the way, I'm not representing anybody here <laughs> because I'm, I'm, my title is the uh, former chair of the late committee for sustainable <laughs> development finance. <laughs> okay, but anyhow, uh, going on to this a bit more still uh, for two minutes. Uh, it is not only a question of financing sustainable development goals from the private sources. The, how the committee is presenting it, it is turning all financing, whether private or, or public, turning it, its impact positive in terms of economic, environmental, social, and governance impact. This would be the transformative change. This would be the revolution that we look into the quality of private financing as well and turn, it, turn its impact to be positive from the EESG perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm. So
Thank you for the former chair of the late committee. It's always very interesting to hear <laughs> opinions <laughs> of people who are free to speak. Uh, now we get the comments, and I think we have really gone deep into the issues, so let's be uh, very brief and concrete, and um, let's um, try to have time for... Uh, com do, would you like to start? Are you leaving? <laughs> Okay, okay, thank you. Just, just one point, but uh, just a point of, of, of uh, factual correction. I did mention Ebola. Uh, I, I, I spoke about uh, the, the need to strengthen. My personal view is that Ebola is not a health uh, crisis only. It is a development crisis. It's a crisis of fragility of a state or three states that were unable to respond to a health crisis that otherwise would have been contained relatively easily, relatively quickly. As a matter of fact, the Democratic Republic of Congo suffers Ebola and contains Ebola in a reasonable manner, just because there is more international aid, more international support there. But, but um, the, your, your point is still valid. The issue is, uh, is, is health a very important component in uh, the post-2015? And the answer is yes, it is. And, and it has to do not only with strengthening health systems, but also with health security. Thank you. Thank you. And um, who wants to start? Malik? <coughs> I will start the question of the girls in Tanzania. Unfortunately, in 2008, when the government went to report to Sedao Committee, the committee says in six elements or issues, the government have put little efforts or almost have done nothing, including education, health, FDM, discriminatory laws, definition of discrimination, and the publication of the convention itself. So until now, it is only 41% of the girls are in school. We, we, we read the government report, which was submitted in 2008. It's almost the same which one was going to be submitted in 2015. Nothing has been done so far. And we have our recommendations. So the situation is not good. That is why we said the government must commit itself in this round to make sure that this situation is rectified for the women, for the girls to have better life. Yes, uh, I don't think any questions were directed directly to me, but, but so, so I don't want to take much time uh, from from possible possible questions but uh, but I think um, I think Pertim, Mr. Mayan and already left but but I would have wanted to or would, yeah he's gone but anyway so I think he was he he really had a point I'd like to say that he had a point more than than he has ever had that <laughs> <laughs> that it's really about yeah very good okay uh, and I, so, so I, I just want to thank him f for his speech. It's it's really about the about the big structures and about the big solutions. It, and it's so we uh, that was also a very good reminder to the civil society that we should not be entangled in in endless details when when the big questions are at stake. Questions are at stake. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I got any questions, but I would like to comment a few things. Uh, uh, the minister said, and she also, also left, that the, the now we go in a funny order, that funny finance comes first and then the contents. Uh, when we decided on when to have this, uh, this Financing for Development conference, uh, there was a big question whether it would be coming first uh, or after. And we decided that it would come first, that it would take pressure off from the summit. Uh, that the money would come first, and then there was an idea anyway what the goals and targets would be, because we had the proposal from the open working group. So this was the order. I'm not quite sure anymore if that's the right order. We might end up negotiating different uh, financial shares for goals, and this is not what we want. 
we want money for the goals, but we want money for other things also. Data was mentioned, capacities of statistical offices in different places. Uh, um, uh, the monitoring system needs money probably in, in different places. And, and uh, so there is more money needed than we ever could imagine with the, with the, with the sustainable development goals and, and, and targets. But anyway, the idea was there. So we will see how successful the Financing for Development uh, conference will be. The fear we have is that um, the package will be reopened after the Addis conference or that some countries will think that what we get from Addis is not enough and we renegotiate what was, um, or we, um, the negotiation starts uh, again and, and um, we negotiate that ne there should be more money by the summit. I don't know how, th how that would happen, but there is a fear that the, the Addis package will not be enough if there is going to be a package and hopefully there will be, not only on money, but there are other issues also. There is capacity building and there is the env enabling environment and there is trade and, and there, is the, uh, there are the systemic issues. So there are the non-financial issues also that Addis would have to, have to uh, solve or at least discuss, which are in our goal 17 also. To Elena about the gender mainstreaming, I'm ha I hate to say this, and particularly in this place, but gender is, is one of the issues in the goals that is best mainstreamed in addition to a separate goal. It is in 13 other goals mainstreamed. I'm not saying it's perfect, but in relative terms, better than any, any other things that there are. Uh, in, on gender issues, there are also 58 uh, in existing indicators. And when we talk about these 338 indicators that are proposed at the, at the moment for global indicators, it's two per target. So with gender, it might suffer at the, at the indicator level. We have to see what is going to come out, out from there. But um, there, there are a lot of issues to measure, as, as my colleague here mentioned in, in the case of, of, of Tanzania. Um, and, and one comment on Ebola, particularly in this house, where, when the EU was uh, negotiating its council conclusions, when we were talking about the goals and targets in New York, Ebola crisis was not what it is now. Uh, but afterwards, the situation changed, and when, when the EU was uh, negotiating its council conclusions, one of the things that we wanted to put there was strengthening the health systems. Not that it's a health, uh, health issue only, but it becomes much broader, but this would be one issue that we could address uh, in EU council conclusions, and we were told that this is an old-fashioned way of approaching this agenda. We never got it there. We were even supported by France, which we thought that would help us. Um, but no. In, in the monitoring system, we have not had detailed discussions yet what the monitoring system would look like, except the high-level political forum would be the global um, uh, body d dealing with it. But how we see it, we have had the multi-stakeholder multi preparations. We are going to have the multi-stakeholder negotiations. So our pro approach is that we will have the multi-stakeholder follow-up and the, the civil society would be participating in the follow-up mechanism also, whatever that would be, but we don't know yet. That might be also difficult because, as I was saying at the lunch, uh, we have civil society participation in both of the negotiations, but in a different format. In our format, which is the post-2015, they have half a day in, within a week. In financing for development, they are included in the speakers list in the order they come, which is much better because in in half a day people can be doing some, something else. On the implementation, I'm I'm fully fully agree with Berti, and we have had long discussions on on this on. A global partnership, it has to be demystified. I'm not an expert on development and, and development cooperation, but even traditional development north-south cooperation is partnership. That's part of it. We are creating private-public partnership or triangular partnerships and all that. We're talking about global partnership as if it was something totally, something that we have never, ever heard or discussed before. Demystify it. I mean, it's, it's not probably up to the Secretary General to do it. But we should do it. Um, uh, a lot of other things. I mean, we are promoting our this societal agreement that we have on on on, on uh, sustainable development as a good practice and a good example. It is probably not a model that can be taken elsewhere. It's a good practice and, and, and good model how everybody can make these commitments. In Finland, the people who are dealing with it say that it has to be made thousand times, not that is it done now, but thousand times more. So how to do this at a global level? Uh, 
probably every country has to have their own system, but I fully agree. The implementation is at, at the national level and every country is responsible for its, uh, for its own development, but with a lot of cooperation help from the international community. Thank you. Um, if there's still a few more questions, we have time for one or two. I'm very late in my thinking, but I noticed now that I didn't hear any mentioning in the report uh, by the Secretary General about population growth. And this remark from Tanzania made me to think that isn't it also part of the problem of the government that the educational share, uh, share of educated uh, uh, girls uh, is not higher because the number of girls in, is increasing also. So I know how difficult question it is, and but I wonder whether it will be somehow included in the discussion today. Now there will be no population conference uh, this decennium, uh, and as an uh, old UNFPA co coordinator, country director, I am interested about this question. Thank you. And um, I think that was about the last question that we have time for. So let's, who wants to reply, Rita? Or I, I think that what we have had in the discussions in, in, in New York in this process is population dynamics. I don't think that as such is in, in the papers. I think that it's unfortunately in the speeches only. It hovers some, somewhere in the back of your mind that we are, what, 7 billion now and growing in 2030. Who knows how many we are? Uh, and how inadequate our goals and, and targets are at that moment. Uh, I would hate to be one of the negotiators in 2029 when we negotiate the next next goals and, and targets and for what kind of a population. It is something that affects these these issues, but not in sort of realistic terms yet. That that how how money-wise or, or how realistic our our goals and how measurable they are when we look at the, the population growth. Uh, maybe you might have something more concrete to say. Thank you. In order to plan for the development, you must know the number of your people so that you can balance the provision of social services vis-a-vis the population of your constituent or your country. Now, this is the problem. We have the sense of 2002. We are using the same to plan for 2015. Now, here are the gap. So the government makes sure that wherever they have development plans, first take the sense for the population, then plan for the service to be provided to the appropriate population. Thank you. Yes, I think that was a very good point. Um, uh, personally, I think I've kind of, of given up with the population discussion because I think I just don't understand all the dynamics behind behind the discussion about population dynamics because because every time I try to, I mean, my background is is, is more in in biological sciences than than in human sciences, and and so so to me, I think it's. Uh, with, um, I'm probably oversimplifying in my head the population models because because I just think that that it's just as sim so simple that that okay if we have too many too many people we just have to do something to have li less people and and uh, and uh, obviously different kinds of, of information sharing tools and education is is the key uh, and 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 it has to be mentioned in the papers and in the in the statements, but but then something happens, and and when you try to bring this discussion up, then then you there are simply quite many people who don't want to have straightforward statements about about uh, there be being too many people on the planet, and and so 
So maybe maybe the people who are wiser than I can can tell me how it should be formulated so so that it uh, it can actually be accepted as as agreed UN language, so to say. Thank you, and um, I suggest we give a big applause to the speakers and to the audience, and thank you all for staying with us here today. Thank you. Thank you, um, and, and thank you for coming to the Ministry for uh, Social Affairs and Health. Uh, our Probably it might be a very practical thing uh, to get out of the building. Please, please come to me or my colleagues who will raise their hands now, who have the means to let you out of the building. So look around and you see some women, four of us, who, who can help you to get out. And, and thank you for a very interesting afternoon. I think we've learned a lot. We've gone forward with our thinking and, and let's keep the women's rights on the agenda. Thank you.